the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. We are waking up to some sunny skies out there and overall it's shaping out to be a very nice Sunday just on the cooler side. So definitely keep it here. We'll talk about that, guys, in just a bit. This morning on DC News Now, stopping the violence after a mass shooting in the district leaves eight people wounded, including a little girl. Police are beefing up their patrols in this community right here. But is that enough? Our team investigates this morning. Then take a look at this. An apartment goes up in flames. One person has now lost their life. Several more are without a home. And later on, it's a race for the White House with well over a year away. Who are the front runners and who is yet to throw in the towel? We're checking in on Election Day 2024. Coming up, we are also checking in on the weather outside with a live look. Look at how the sun is shining down on the Washington National Cathedral this morning, but don't let it fool you. It is rather chilly outside. Brittany Ward joining us there from the Weather Center. Brittany, it was rainy, it was gloomy, it was windy all day yesterday, and throughout the course of this morning, that radar behind you has gotten <laughs> clearer and clearer. I like the looks of it. Absolutely, Joe. We are waking up to a very better day today than we had yesterday. That cold front that brought us all the trouble when it came down to a weather. Finally, out of our area. Now we're just waking up to sunny skies here uh, in the nation's capital. Seeing a few clouds roll their way into the higher terrain, but overall we are dry across the area. It is shaping out to be a beautiful Sunday. Take a look at these radar estimated rain totals from the last 24 hours. We desperately needed the rain and we got a little over an inch as you head further off to the south. DC metro area saw a little less than three quarters of an inch in the and a little le or a uh, half an inch, excuse me, there in Hagerstown. So it's beneficial rain. We needed the rain and overall it's shaping out to be a beautiful day. That dense fog advisory we had this morning finally expired. And we take a look at the wind gusts that we saw across the area. Frederick, it looks like you guys recorded the highest coming in at 40 miles per hour yesterday. DC coming in at 31 miles per hour. So overall, shaping out to be a beautiful day today with cooler temperatures and it looks like those cooler temperatures will be sticking around as we head into our work week. So definitely keep it here, Joe. We'll talk about that in just a bit. We are not going anywhere. All right, Brittany Ward to start us off there in the Weather Center. Brittany, thank you. Well, normally we say the calm before the storm. How about this? Today we're calling it the calm after the storm. Two videos up there on your screen. To the left is Adelphi, Maryland. It is a much different scene out there this morning than it was last night. The roads still may be damp, so use caution when you are driving as always. On the right, you will see the damage that wasn't extensive yesterday, but a tree in Northeast DC was snapped in half, knocking down some power lines and police, as you see there, they had to block off the area to make sure uh, that people stayed safe. Meanwhile, listen to this. The National Weather Service also confirming a tornado that touched down in Montgomery County, Maryland yesterday. It happened in Poolsville. According to the NWS, it was an EF zero tornado. Its path stretched for about 100 yards, so think of it at the size of a football field. It uprooted and snapped some branches. No injuries or deaths were reported there. But despite the damage in certain areas of the DMV, yesterday's storm ended pretty quickly, much more quickly than expected. DC News Now's Anae Simmons shows us the aftermath throughout the entire region. Oh, I've heard some thunder out there. I heard a lot of wind. It was, it was pretty crucial. MoCo resident Fern says he was working while the storm went on this afternoon. It just started coming down, you know, we're just getting stuff going. I was inside, just started hearing that storm pouring. Just everybody started coming inside. And the storm lasted two and a half hours with heavy rain, thunderstorms and wind with damage reported throughout the DMV. Power lines were lowered and branches fell off trees due to the weather and a house was struck by lightning and the gas line caught on fire. Fortunately, according to the Montgomery County Public Information Officer, no injuries were reported and the fire was quickly contained. Another MoCo resident, Salvador Riviera, says he was doing yard work at his house and saw the sky change. It started like with some thunder and they started like sprinkling, but then it quickly progressed to more lightning and thunder. He says once the thunderstorm rolled in, that's when he waited out the storm under his garage. Lightning, <laughs> yeah, once that, yeah, because water you usually can tolerate, but strike of lighting is not good. Reporting in Montgomery County, Anae Simmons, DC News Now.
All right, Anae, thanks so much. Your time now, 8.04 this morning. The search continues for those behind the trigger of D.C.'s latest mass shooting. On Friday night, eight people were shot, among them a 12-year-old girl. Luckily, nobody died in this attack, but it did happen in two separate locations, and police believe it's all connected. Dave Laval now on what D.C. police are doing to prevent another attack from happening. D.C. police increased their presence around this Congress Heights neighborhood Saturday. They're on hand to stop further violence. Police converged on La Bomb Street and 5th Street Southeast around 10 o'clock Friday night. Seven people had been shot. All of them are expected to survive. A 12-year-old girl also found herself wounded in another shooting a few blocks away along 2nd Street. Police believe the two shootings may be connected. I'm angry, upset. Salim Adolfo is the advisory neighborhood commissioner for this area of District 8. He's calling for an end to the violence that has rocked not only here, but all of these. We've had excessive violence in this community for a while, but no matter how many times it happens, you know, it's, it's still heart-wrenching to see. I find that neighbors are scared. Um, neighbors are saying that they're scared to come outside. Erica Green is another advisory neighborhood commissioner for District 8. Prior to Friday's attack, Metro Police reported 402 assaults with a dangerous weapon around the city. One more compared to the same time a year ago. It's devastating. It shows me that our work is far from done. Several neighbors we talked to did not want to go on camera, but they did say they hope the increased police presence will make their neighborhood safer. Police are looking for a black sedan, possibly a Mercedes they believe the suspects drove when they opened fire. Anyone with information is asked to call Metro Police. In Congress Heights, Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, Dave, getting us up to speed there. Thanks so much. All right, we're going to take you to Northeast D.C. now, where one person has died, another five people left without a home after this. An apartment went up in flames. It happened late yesterday morning. The fire started on the third floor, and as you can see here, it quickly extended to the attic. Now you're looking at the time when they were able to extinguish it. First responders telling D.C. News Now it took roughly 30 minutes to put that fire out. Still no word on what caused it, though. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. In the meantime, developing now in D.C., new updates to a crash that left a person dead early Friday morning. D.C. police say it happened just before 6 a.m. on the busy Piney Branch Road in Northwest. Investigators say the driver of a Toyota Prius made a turn and collided with the person on a motorcycle. That cyclist was pronounced dead on the scene. And a heads up, if you drive a car from Gen General Motors, which is now asking certain owners to park their models outside Due to a potential fire risk, GM is recalling Chevrolet Silverado medium-duty trucks made from 2019 to 2023. This is literally thousands of vehicles, guys. We're talking about 40,000 of them. These trucks have the potential to leak brake fluid and start a fire. This can happen when the truck is being driven or even when it's just parked. GM says no injuries have been reported, but our recommendation, take it to the dealer or call the dealer up wherever you bought it to figure out what is next for your truck. Well, speaking of cars, two top prosecutors in the DMV are pleading for a recall of used Hyundai and Kia models. The vehicles have overwhelmingly been the targets in recent waves of car thefts. DC News Now's consumer reporter Ben Dennis has been tracking the trend and getting answers for us. Well, the numbers don't lie. Carjackings and thefts are up, and it's Kias and Hyundai models that are increasingly susceptible to these bad actors. And now 18 state attorneys generals are asking the feds to put a recall on many models that are so easy to steal. Now, DC News Now has chronicled the turmoil drivers say they're forced to face. And because certain used Kias and Hyundais lack anti-theft engine immobilizers, it's those mechanisms that DC Attorney General Brian Schwab and Maryland AG Anthony Brown want recalled. They sent this letter to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration requesting it get done for 2011 to 2022 models. Now to the numbers. DC carjackings are up 300% in the past week compared to the same week last year. 24 incidents this week, 148 so far this year, which is a 21% increase compared to 2022. And those figures don't account for car thefts where a driver or passenger was left stranded. 
and in Prince George's County, Maryland, there have been over 2,500 stolen vehicle reports this year alone. Here's how prosecutors want the feds to step in, but first, the real world implications of these crimes. They had carjacked someone else and had armed, had committed several armed robberies in my vehicle. My side mirror had been knocked had been broken and then my back window, the small mirror, had been just shattered. This is a national issue and it's a real public safety issue and it's one that's also hitting hard in the district. And these vehicles are being stolen, but they're also being used in other crimes. Um, they're being used for joyrides and reckless driving. Um, and that's an issue that we need to address and, and through this letter, as a first step, we're, we're trying to accomplish that goal. And once a federal recall is issued, consumers do not have to pay for any parts that need replaced or service that's involved. And a list of all vehicle recalls can be found at NHTSA.gov. And it's there that drivers can input their vehicle's VIN number to see if their own car needs servicing. In the newsroom, Ben Dennis, DC News Now. All right, your time now, 8.10, and we are taking a look at your morning, planning it, shaping out to be a very nice morning. By that 9 o'clock hour, temperatures slowly begin to warm up into the upper 50s here in the nation's capital. Holding on to the upper 50s, though, as you head into that 10 o'clock hour, lower 60s by 11, and overall highs today will struggle to get out of the 60s, which is actually below average for this time of year. And then it looks like we're holding on to that cooling trend as we head into the work week. So definitely keep it here. Another check of that seven days coming up.